I'm sure most of you are familiar by now what's going on between the Young Bucks and WWE. At the beginning of September, the WWE sent a cease and desist order to the Young Bucks about their usage of the phrase suck it. And this past week, after Raw, a second cease and desist order was sent to the Young Bucks by the WWE over the usage of too sweet, and especially the hand gesture. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing I would love more than for the Young Bucks to cease and desist being any type of relevant or even being in professional wrestling at all. I get that these guys clearly love wrestling, and they are marks, and believe me they are, that love being professional wrestlers. That's cool. And they are guys with great athletic talents that can do all types of wonderful things, but ultimately to me they represent so much of what is wrong with professional wrestling today. They are basically rip-off artists that have made their name off of the names, the ideas, the thoughts, the concepts of others. Suck it. Too sweet. The overutilization of the super kicks. All this crap with the Bullet Club and Elite. Like literally everything these guys do is a rip-off of something somebody else has done. And you could say, well, that happens in large part with wrestling anyways, and there aren't very many original ideas and haven't been for a long time. That is true, but the lengths that they go to so blatantly rip off and sucker so many of you into being fans of them and making money off of that, I think is a shame. And oh, to top it all off, an invasion of Raw in the parking lot. How original. I wonder where they got that idea from. The same place they got pretty much every idea they've ever used. From somebody else. Unbelievable. And they are ultimately nothing more than glorified spot monkeys who, because they never bothered to actually learn how to really work and don't actually know how to tell a real story in a match and put together a standard wrestling match, have to go out there and flip, kick, and bump their way into entertaining people in this instant gratification society because we've lowered our standards that much as professional wrestling fans. I mean, what are these guys' as characters? What type of charisma do they have? What type of mic skills? Exactly. And all their flipping and kicking does is not make wrestling look tougher or more real. It makes it look more fake and bullshit because you say after X number of moves, it doesn't affect these guys. It just reminds me how fake this crap is. And while they've made money for themselves and good for them, they are a couple hundred thousand heirs instead of the millionaires that they should be or could be. And they are ultimately medium fish in an ever-shrinking pond of professional wrestling. That's exactly what they are. I would love nothing more to spend several more minutes bashing these clowns and talk about how much they suck and how much it makes me sick that guys like this sell all this merch through Hot Topic and pro wrestling tees and how disgusting I think it is that so many people classify these guys as being great. It absolutely makes me sick. It really does. It's frustrating. It sucks. And these clowns ultimately suck. But, all that being said, I have always prided myself on being as fair as I possibly could be. Which means sometimes people that I like, or people that I'm a fan of, I will knock them when it is called for. On the flip side, people I'm not a fan of, people I don't like, I will still defend if it feel like it's the right thing to do. And in this particular case, I will defend the Young Bucks. In this particular case, I'm on the Young Bucks side. The WWE is wrong. And perhaps the WWE with their high-priced, high-powered team of attorneys should go back and re-educate themselves on intellectual properties and intellectual property law. When we talk about intellectual property, we're talking about a group of laws that ultimately serves to protect thoughts, ideas, concepts. But just coming up with a thought, an idea, or a concept in and of itself does not automatically give you broad sweeping power over everything that revolves around it and does not necessarily even mean that you necessarily own it. There are still laws within the greater concept of intellectual property that offer some of those protections, whether they be copyrights or patents or trade secrets or trademarks. These are the sets of laws that funnel into being part of intellectual property protection and necessary components of protecting said intellectual property. And I know WWE believes 
that if it's been on their TV at some point in time or at some point in time they came up with the concept, that they automatically own all the rights to it. And if somebody tries to go against that, they will sue the pants off of you. But that doesn't automatically make it so. Just because you wish it, want it, and hope it to be doesn't make it true. And when you look at items such as Suck It and Too Sweet, they would ultimately be covered by trademarks in terms of the greater umbrella of intellectual property protection. And just because, again, you came up with a thought or a concept, you think you own it, doesn't mean you do. And even if the WWE wants to take that argument and narrow it down in a different way and say, well, we own trademarks on things like the Click and NWO, just because you own trademarks on those specific things doesn't offer entire, complete, broad, sweeping protections of everything that comes under that umbrella. It just doesn't. Furthermore, if the contracts with your talents don't specifically spell out that anything that they come up with during that time or you come up with during that time is all intellectual property of the WWE, the talent could potentially own those things. As their intellectual property, they could go and file trademarks and own the rights to it. Now, knowing the WWE, one thing they're very good at is utilizing loopholes and fudging numbers and making sure that they make a contract as good as structurally sound as possible for them as a company, hence why they sign all their talent still to independent contractor contracts, which gives all the things that goes with that, and ultimately, more importantly for WWE, what doesn't go with, and I've talked about before, I'm sure that they have in their contracts that if you come up with something during that time, it belongs to us. Most cor corporations, big companies with any brain matter will do that. But, but, and, the, and this is a key thing, without a legal protection, and just because you have a contract that says it becomes your intellectual property in and of itself, does not mean that you get a legal protection. Without that legal protection, other people are indeed possibly free to use them. And the last time I checked, which is very, very recent, the WWE doesn't have a trademark on Too Sweet. Suck it, I'm not so sure of, but I don't believe they have the trademark, but I could be wrong. I can speak with relatively confident belief that they do not own any trademarks revolving around Too Sweet, whether it be the phrase and its usage and, in particular, the hand gesture. They don't own these things. And in fact, a little bit of an internet search revealed to me that if anybody would own the trademark to Too Sweet, and in particular this specific hand gesture, it would be North Carolina State, the Wolfpack, going back to 2011. And even if that trademark at that time had expired, there's nothing to say that that particular trademark wasn't reapplied for and ultimately gotten again. It's, it's one of these things where the WWE is sending cease and desist orders on things that they don't necessarily legally own. And in this particular case, my advice to the Young Bucks would be, you should fight back and continue to use these and put the onus, the burden of proof on WWE to prove that they belong to them. And if they don't, or even if you're not sure, why not go and file for the trademark yourself and see what happens. If they want to play dirty, play dirtier. If they want to get nuts, you get all types of nutty with them. Because when it comes to intellectual property, when it comes to patents and copyrights and trademarks, it could be very confusing from a legal standpoint. And frankly, different attorneys, different judges in the court of law, in civil court, in copyright court, trademark court, might interpret the laws differently. So there's no guarantee that even if you're afraid of WWE filing suit because of their team of attorneys and the amount of resources they have backing them, there's no guarantee that they would win a suit or a case over who actually owns the trademark, the rights to utilize Suck It and Too Sweet. There is no guarantee. It can be as much of a grab bag and a 50-50 proposition as much as anything else. And the last time I checked when it came to Too Sweet, the WWE tried to file a trademark on it back in 2015, I believe it was March, 
And in June, they received something back from the patent office that would have required a response within six months. The WWE did not respond. So therefore, the application for the trademark was invalidated. It was basically made null and void, meaning that it expired. They don't own it. And I don't see where they have went back and reapplied and gotten it. So until WWE can actually prove that they filed for the trademark, that they actually have the trademark, they don't own shit. And if anything, at this point in time, the WWE should cease and desist in this action, in this way, against the Young Bucks. Because frankly, they don't have a lot of legal ground to stand on based off of the way I see it. And I think based off of the way at least some attorneys would potentially see it. You could make an argument about the intellectual property part, but there are still steps and procedures along the way that the WWE, who typically is pretty good in this space, would have to follow to make sure that those protections are put in place. And a thought concept idea, just because it's yours, you may feel like it's an intellectual property, that doesn't necessarily mean that it automatically belongs to you because it can become a burden of proof of who came up with it, when did you come up with it, when did the other side start using it, does it really matter if you came up with it first, if you didn't go through the proper channels and processes to make sure that you protected it, what's to stop that other person from doing it, it most certainly doesn't mean that it's going to apply retroactively and there's no guarantee you're going to win it for going forward. And until the WWE can come with something better from a legal standpoint instead instead of just strong language and a cease and desist order, the Young Bucks shouldn't stop. I'd fight this crap. And if it means a lawsuit and going to court with them, do it. Because the WWE is not used to somebody pushing back. The WWE doesn't like somebody pushing back. And the WWE won't necessarily know how to act if somebody does push back after they've issued the initial challenge, the WWE is used to people suing them and having to respond that way. The WWE is not necessarily used to having to go through the process of going after somebody and them going at having somebody go right back at them. That's why the whole thing with them and Warrior lasted for so many years because Warrior fought him every step of the way. He didn't necessarily win, mind you, but I feel in this particular case that the Young Bucks have a much better case than the Ultimate Warrior did. So while I wish the Young Bucks would come up with something original and I wish they would cease and desist on ripping off other people's stuff, ultimately, until the WWE can provide more tangible proof of what they do own versus what they don't, the Young Bucks should continue to do what they're doing and it's the WWE who should cease and desist.